In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about how to represent various components that are in an electrical circuit using 2D symbols. There are three basic parts to an electrical circuit. The first part is the energy source, which is represented by the dry cell over here. The second part is the object that is going to be using the electrical energy, which is represented by the light bulb over here. And the third part is the conductors, which are the wires, and they are going to connect the various components within my electrical circuit to allow for the current to flow. Over the next couple of slides, I'm going to be going through various examples of energy sources, um, objects that use the electrical energy, and other components that can be added to our electrical circuit. Our first energy source is a cell. A cell stores chemical energy, which is converted into electrical energy when the cell is placed within an electrical circuit. Our 2D symbol for a cell is represented as this. To draw this symbol, you draw two lines with the wires connecting on either side. It is important to make sure that there are no gaps um, between the wire and the cell. Our next energy source is a battery, and a battery works the same way as a cell. Stored chemical energy is converted into electrical energy once it is placed in an electrical circuit. The symbol for a battery is this, and the same rules apply. You're going to have a longer line, a shorter line, a longer line, a shorter line, a longer line, a shorter line, and then the wire connecting on either end. Please make sure that there are no gaps between the battery and the wire. Our final energy source is a power pack and you'll be using this throughout the project this term. With this power pack you're able to adjust the voltage by turning the dial over here. This is the symbol for a power pack. The positive end matches up with the red port on the power pack over here and the negative end matches up with the black port on the power pack over there. You'll be clipping your wires using crocodile clips to each of those points and that will be connecting a source of energy, a source of electrical energy, to your circuit. We are now going to look at the components that will be using electrical energy within your circuit. Our first example is a light bulb. There are three symbols that can be used to represent a light bulb within our electrical circuit. The first symbol is you would draw a circle with a loop on the inside. Our second symbol, you draw a circle with a cross in the middle and then the wire on either side. Try to make sure that there's no gaps. And our final symbol, a circle with an arch flowing through. And again, try to make sure that there aren't any gaps. Once the light bulb is turned on, electrical energy flowing into the light bulb will be transformed into light energy and heat energy. Our next object is an LED light bulb, and the symbol for an LED light bulb is this. For this symbol, you would draw a triangle with a wire connecting on the other side, a line, and another line to represent the wire, and then two arrows coming off the triangle. For our LED light bulb, once the light bulb is turned on, electrical energy would be flowing into the light bulb. We would have light energy being released and also heat energy. LEDs are said to be much more efficient than a filament light bulb because more energy is being transformed into light energy and less is being wasted as heat energy. Our next electrical component is a buzzer and this is the symbol for a buzzer. You would draw half a circle with our two wires coming out of the bottom. When an electrical buzzer is being, is being used, electrical energy is flowing into the buzzer and being transformed into sound energy and some of it into heat energy. Our next electrical component is an electric motor and this is the symbol for the motor. To draw this symbol, you would draw a circle with an M in the center and your two wires connecting on either side. 
When the motor is running, electrical energy will be entering the motor. It is then transformed into kinetic energy. Some of it will be transformed into heat energy, and some of it will be transformed into sound energy. Both of these examples would be wasted energy. Our final component is a speaker, and this is the symbol for a speaker. To draw the speaker, you would draw a box with the speaker coming out and then two wires to connect at the end. For our speaker, electrical energy will be entering and will be transformed into sound energy and some of it will be wasted as heat energy. Our next component are the conductors and these are the wires. The symbol for wires is this. Please make sure when you are drawing the wires that there are no gaps and that the wires are drawn in a straight line. The wires are there to connect various components within your circuit together and this allows the current to flow. If there are any breaks, for example if the components are not connected correctly or there is a break within the wire itself, it means that the electricity will not be able to flow and the components will not work. Our next component is a switch. The image in the middle is the one that you would be most likely to recognise as a switch. On the left hand side we have something called a knife switch. This is represented as this within our electrical circuit. If the switch is open it means there is a break within that switch. So when I connect my electrical components, if I leave the knife switch open, it means that my light bulb for example would not be turned on. If my switch is closed, it would be represented as this in your diagram, and this would mean that current will be able to flow throughout the entire circuit, and my light bulb would be on. Our next electrical component is an ammeter. The role of an ammeter is to measure the flow of current within our electrical circuit. The units for this are amps. The symbol to represent an ammeter is this. And the next image shows um, a number of ammeters being placed within our electrical circuit to measure the flow of current at various points within our circuit. Our next component is a voltmeter. The role of a voltmeter is to measure the voltage flowing in a circuit. The units for this are volts. The symbol for a voltmeter is this. It can be placed within an electrical circuit and in this diagram is, it is measuring the voltage before and after the light bulb. Our final component is a resistor and the role of a resistor is to limit the amount of current that flows within a circuit. There are two different kinds of resistor. Our first kind is a fixed resistor which is represented by this symbol over here and it is going to limit the current to a fixed point. Our variable resistor which is represented by the symbol over here and you can vary how much you limit the current by moving the metal bar over the coils here. This is a summary of all the circuit symbols that we've run through in this presentation today. You must make sure that you can identify each of the symbols and draw them correctly. Now let's see what you've learned. I want you to pause the video, draw the symbols on the left hand side and then match them up with the labels on the right hand side. Pause the video now. Here are the answers. Did you get them all correct? If you struggled with any of the aspects of this video, make sure that you speak to your teacher the next time that you see them.